Hey guys, welcome back to How Commands Work, and today I'm going to show you the magical effects of the forward slash particle effect. Now these actually don't serve any purpose besides the fact that they look very very nice. So to demonstrate this I'm using repeat command blocks, which is this bluish purplish color here. So to get a repeating command block, all you have to do is go forward slash give at p c o m m command block, make sure you leave the underscore there, place it down, click this until it says repeat, and then click needs redstone so it becomes always active. Now this is going to tick 20 times per second. So these particles are being spawned in 20 times per second. So I'm going to show you the syntax for the particle. So let's see, you have forward slash particle, the type of particle you want, where you want the particle relative to your command block, in this case I want it two blocks above, and then your directions, your speed, and how many you want every time the command is run. So I'm just going to go through the this part right here, the particle type so far. I'm just leaving everything else um, as these settings right now, just so you can see it. I will get to them. Now this is particle drip water. It's the particle you can see when you have water on a block and underneath the block you see the water dripping through. This is the enchantment table particle. This is the portal particle which endermen use. This is a cloud particle. This is the angry villager particle. This is the happy villager particle. And this is the note particles too. So to get a list of particles you type in forward slash particle space and then tab and it will give you a giant list of all the particles you can use. Some are a lot bigger than others but they all look very very different and they are very very fun to play around with. So let's move on to what the heck is going on with these particles. Well here I've actually changed the direction of the particles. So this one here, this is the direction here, zero, zero, zero. Now this actually means X, Y, Z. So where would the particles spawn within range? So it's always going to spawn at these coordinates, always, because I've specified that they should not deter from these coordinates, if that makes sense. So for this particle right here, I've set a bunch of coordinates, so it should spawn five blocks above. However, it's spawning within one block of five blocks above, which is interesting because I've specified here in the y-axis that it can spawn within one block of this section here on the y-axis only. It cannot go left or right or forwards or backwards because these are zeros right here, if that makes sense. Now here, it's not going anywhere. It's strictly staying on the same y-axis because here, I've done the same here. The y-axis, it can't move. So if I made this a one, it's actually going to make a square or a, a sphere of where the particles can spawn, but you'll see that it's all on the same y. If you're still confused about that, I'm just going to increase this to five, and you'll see that it can spawn within five blocks or more within the coordinate that I specify only on the y-axis. I hope this makes sense because it is very difficult to explain, but it's basically the relative distance from your coordinates which the particle can spawn on the axis. I hope you understand. Now in these two examples you can see the particles are actually flying off this time. It's because particles have this speed. They have a motion and they want to go towards, or they want to go away from the point, right? These ones aren't because I have such a low speed, as you can see, it's 0.001. Now here, the speed is actually 0.1, so they kind of spread out a little bit more. If I make this speed 1, then it spreads out a lot more, as you can see. The particles are flying through the air. Let's make it 10, and you'll see how ridiculously fast they actually get. So you can hardly even see what's going on. So let's make this 0.1 again. There we go. Now this giant cloud has the same speed, but it's playing this 20 times, 20 times a second. So every time this command is run, it is spawning 20 of those flame particles. This one's spawning, spawning two, and this one's spawning 20, which is why it looks so thick and dense. And if we increase the speed here to 0.5, you'll see that it spreads out a lot more, causing a really crazy effect. Now there's one more thing I want to talk about. Notice how you can see these particles. If I move away, you will see that they disappear. They're gone. I can't see them. Well, I can kind of see that note one if you have a good eye. But I can't see them anymore. The particles aren't being rendered. See? No particles. However, there is an option you can do to disable that. Force. 
It means if the person has their particles disabled or if they're far away, they will still see the particles. So let's move out of range. And as you can see, every other particle is invisible except for the one that we set force to. So force basically forces you to see these particles no matter what your settings are. Alternatively, you can write normal, but I'm not sure why because it just pretends it's normal anyway if you don't have anything there. So, thanks everyone for watching this quick episode of How Particles Work. I hope you enjoyed. Please leave suggestions for what commands you'd like to know about. But for now, thanks everyone for watching. I will see you in the next one. Take care.